Hello, welcome to Benjamin Tree. Today we're going to be learning how to calculate the age of people. Or you could be using it for the age of how long a project or business has been going on for. So to do this, we're going to be looking at two different functions. We're going to be using it, the function year fraction and dated if. So let's start off and we're going to have the ages of these famous comedians and we're going to find out how old they are. So we're going to start with the first function, year fraction. So we're going to start off and say equal, we're going to say year fraction, our year frac, and then we need a start date. So for Louis C.K., he was born on September 12, 1967, and the end date is going just to be today. And the last thing we need is a basis. How are we going to calculate this? So in more of a financial companies, if they need to calculate it based on you know, rounding it off to certain numbers to make it a little bit more even, you have different ways to do it. But for us, we're just going to be using the basis one for actual age. So if it's a leap year, it's going to calculate 366. If it's a regular year, it's going to calculate 365. There's going to be no rounding. So we'll just put one. So for our purposes, we're just going to be using one the entire time. But if your company or business has certain roundings for financial transactions, you would want to figure out which of these bases your company would use. So let's close this out. And we find that according to this uh, function, Louis C.K. is 48.822756 years old. Okay, so that gives us uh, the rounded number because it's July right now and it's almost September so it's not quite 49. So let's repeat this one more time just to master the function. So we're going to type in equal to year frac. We're going to have the date for Jerry Seinfeld which is April 29th 1954. The end date today and the basis is one, the actual calculation. Okay, and he is 62.195081 years old. Okay, let's drag this down, and we get the ages of all these different comedians with the their age brought out to the farthest decimal. Now, when you have a birthday or before your birthday, you don't say, hey, I'm 37.258069 years old. So, how do we figure out what their regular age is? we're going to round it down to the closest integer. So to do that, we say equals int. So anything in here is going to be rounded down to the closest integer. So let's replace that with practice. We can say year, uh, year, year frac. Okay, the start date is their birthday, and the end date is today, and the basis that we're using is one, the actual. All right, close it down, and we can see that Louis C.K. is 48 years old. So one more time with Jerry Seinfeld. Say equal to integer, and we're going to put that equation in again. Year fraction, start date is going to be April 29th, 1954. His birthday, end date is today, and our basis is one for the actual calculations. And we can see that Jerry Seinfeld is 62 years old. So let's drag this down, and voila, we get all of their ages rounded down to the nearest integer, which is how we would express how old they are. All right, there's one more function we're going to be using called dated if. Now, this is kind of funky because usually, so we type in year frac here, and we put in their first parentheses. It kind of tells us what we need to do for our input data. Dated if is kind of strange. So let's type in dated if. It recognizes it. So while we're typing it, it doesn't say, oh, you're trying to type this function. And it doesn't do that. And then once we put it in, okay, you typed in dated if, but I'm not going to tell you what you need to put in. So I guess this is from a different program that got pulled into Excel during this development, but it still hasn't been part of the regular functions that you have in Excel. So uh, I have it over here in this box, it's start date, end date, and unit. So let's learn how to use this. So start date, like the other ones that we've been using, is the birthday that we're using for these uh, table. And then the end date is going to be today. And now the unit that we need to put in, we're going to put inside of quotations a Y to say we want to know how many years are between these two dates. We put it in, it gives us 48. 
So one more time, equal dated if we want the start date, Jerry Seinfeld's birthday. We want the end date, which is today. And we're using the unit of years. So inside of quotations, put a Y. And we get 62. Let's drag this on down. And as you can see, this gives us the same numbers as using the function of year fraction, but inside of an integer function. So I want to take a quick look of why do we not use the year minus the year. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, we have the start date of December 31st, 2016, and we have the end date of January 1st, 2017. That's just two days. So if we use year of this number, so we take the year, we want to pull the year out of January 1st, 2017, and we subtract it by the year of December 31st, 2016, we're going to get one year. In theory, yeah, it's a new year, so it's another year. But if someone's born on December 31st, 2016, the next day in most of the world, they're not one years old. Except for South Korea. You're born on the last day of the year, you're one years old. The next day, on January 1st, you're two years old. But they use a much different aging system. So let's see what happens if we use these very, very close dates with the two functions that we we were talking about today. So we put in year fraction. We have the start date of December 31st and we have the end date of January 1st and the basis of actual. We get the total years as 0.00273972. Okay. Now if we put that as an integer, okay, so we have the integer of year frac with the start date of December 31st, the end date of January 1st with a one uh, actual basis, that's zero years old because it hasn't reached a full year. And again, if we use dated if, then we have the start date, we have the end date, and then we use the year as what we're counting, it's going to come up with year. Okay, so as you can see, by using year fraction and dated if, it's going to round it down to the number of completed years. But if you use year minus year, it's going to, it can give you a number that's way too big for the actual reality. Okay, so we've looked at year fraction, we looked at dated if. Now we're going to look at dated if because there's a lot more to it. So let's go over the basics here of dated if, the simple things that you're probably going to use most of the time. Okay, so we have November 11th, 1918, the last day of World War I to today. Now we're going to find out how many years it's been. So, like we did before, it's equal to dated if. Okay, the start date is November 11th, 1918. The end date is uh, July 7th, 2016. And our unit is going to be years. So it's been 97 years since the end of World War I. Now let's find out how many months have passed between these two. Okay, so we go dated if, and we go to the end of World War I to today, 7 slash 7, 2016, and then we're going to put M inside of quotations. It's been 1,171 months since the end of World War I. All right, if we look at that also with days, it's going to be dated if is going to give us the number of days. So dated ifs, we have the end of World War I to today's date, and inside for our unit we put these in quotation. It's been 35,668 days since the end of World War I. Now, we have three more units here, and they kind of seem a little odd. Okay, so let's take a look at them and understand what they're doing. Um, you know, right now I don't see uh, any purpose. Well, I can't think of something when I would use this, but you never know. You could come across something it's like, oh yeah, I need to calculate this. Let's use dated if. Okay, so let's take a look. So we're going to say dated if. We're going to say the end of World War I to today, and we're going to use the unit MD, months and days. Now, what happens is this calculates. It calculates how many days it doesn't look at the year, and it doesn't really look at the month. 
it just says, all right, to the end of November, in our example, to the end of November to the beginning of July, how many days is that? So let's kind of calculate this out. So we know that November has 31 days, okay? And we're going to subtract the number of days. So there's, a, there's 11, okay? So we're going to say day, and then it's the 11th day of the month. So we're going to put day A5. Because when we put day A5, it says, okay, the day in this month is 11. So we're going to pull out 11. So 31 minus 11 will give us, um, doesn't give us this date. It gives us the number 20. So for the rest of the months from starting with the 12th to the 31st of November, there are 20 days. Okay. So if we look at days from the beginning of the month, we're going to put days and we're going to take the day out of out of July 7th, 2016. So day B5, so the day from that that uh, date, is it going to be a 7? Because that's what the day is. Okay, so, but what happens is we're going to subtract 1 because it's counting July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th, but not the 7th. Okay, it's saying how many days before this date have there been in this month? Okay, so we get 1, 6, 1999. We don't want the serial number, we just want the num general number. So as you can see, so um, between, so for the rest of November here, it's starting with the 12th to the 31st, there's 20 days. And then starting with the 1st of July to the 7th, there's six days before that. So 20 plus 6 is 26. And that is what data if is returning to us. I'm not sure what, mm, you might want to calculate this, but you never know. We're not going to practice this today in today's uh, lesson, but it just gives you an idea of what this, this mysterious function can do. And you can come back and look at this if you stumble upon a reason why you would want to use it. Okay, let's go to the unit YM. So we're going to go dated if. We're going to have the start date of July, or sorry, the end of World War I. We're going to have the end date of today. And we're going to use the, we're going to be using the unit YM. Okay, it gives us seven. Okay, that's how many months. So it's not looking at the day, it's not looking at the year, it's just how many months. So from November to July, how many months is that? So months to the end of the year. So that equals to there's 12 months in a year, and we're going to subtract the months. Okay, so we're going to put months in the serial number of November 11th, 1918. That's going to give us 11. So it's going to pull out the 11th. So 12 minus 1 is going to be 1. Okay, it's giving us the date, we just want the general number. So there's one month in the rest of the year after November. Okay, so months from the beginning of the year. So between July and beginning of the year, how many months are there? So we're going to take months, we're going to the serial number here for July 7th, 2016. So it's going to pull out 7 because it's the 7th month in this serial number. But we want to subtract 1 because we're not counting July. We're counting the months before, from the beginning of the year to the months that have happened before July. We put it in, and we change it to a general number. We get six. So one month has happened since the end of, since November to the end of the year, and six months have happened since the beginning of the year to July. Six plus one equals seven. That's what dated if with the unit YM is returning. Don't know when you might want to use that, but it's an option. Okay. If you can think of a re way you would want to use these, please leave a comment. I'm interested to know, but I just can't think of something off my top of my head right now. All right. Let's do the last special calculations that dated if can do. In case we type in dated if, we got our start date, we got our end date, but this time our unit inside of quotation is YD. And it's giving us 238 days. So it's kind of telling us how many days have happened between November 11th to, to July 7th. It's not counting to the years. I mean, the, yeah, the years. It's not saying 1918. It's not saying 2006. It's not counting that whatsoever. So let's figure out how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a date. Okay, we're going to say the year of uh, no, that we have in our first uh, date of November 11, 1918. We want to pull out that year, but we want to pull out plus one. We want to bump it up to the next year, and we're going to say 
January 1st. Okay, so remember in date, it's asking us for the year, month, and day. So we're going to pull the year from this date, our start date, add one to it, and make it January 1st. So what happens is you see we got January 1st, 1919. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this. We're going to subtract from January 1st, 1919. We're going to subtract November 11th, 1918 to see how many days have happened till the end of the year. Okay, so let's subtract A11, the November 11th, 1918. We hit enter, and it gives us a strange serial number, but we want to know. 51 days have happened between November 11th to the end of the year. That's all we're concerned about. Okay, so now we want to know how many days have happened since the beginning of the year. So let's make a date. And we're going to take the year. Okay, 2016. We want to start off with 2016. So we're pulling the year out of July 7th, 2016. And we want to start with January 1st. Okay, so that gives us January 1st, 2016. Okay, but now we're going to take our date of B11, which is July 7th, 2016. We're going to subtract the date of January 1st, 2016. But we're going to subtract one more day because we're not counting July 7th. We're counting all the days up to July 6th. And that gives us a strange serial number. But let's change it to the general number. That's 187. Okay, so if we take 187 and we add it to 51, we will get 238 days. Okay, so this unit of YD tells us that the number of days left in this year till the number of days to the next year of July 7, 2016 is 238 days. Okay, so it's calculating the number of days between these two dates, but not considering the year whatsoever. Okay, so... Again, that's another strange function that you can use with the YD unit, but for a lot of basic people, you're probably never going to use it, but you never know. All right, so for practice, I went on the Wikipedia and found the names of uh, a list of prominent world leaders in the 1970s, you know, from Richard Nixon to Deng Xiaoping. Now, I want you guys to figure out for practice how old they are in the years, months, and days. Okay, so when you're using the years, practice once using the year fraction uh, for function and practice once using the dated if function and then find out how many months and days old they are. Now, whenever you're using, whenever you are displaying your date, use a whole number. Okay, use an integer. Okay, don't use any fractions. Hint, hint, hint. And if you're going to be using your fraction, use the basis of actual, actual that we talked about. Uh, if you notice that these two gentlemen here, that they're not dead yet, so what would you use for the end date? You should probably be able to figure it out. When you finish, come over to the practice answer key to check your answers. Well, thank you, using, thank you for using Benjamin Tree today. Hope you were able to learn a lot. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them on our YouTube channel, on our blog, or on our Facebook page. And if you can think of some special situations where you might want to be using some of the more advanced units of Dated If, leave a comment. I would love to learn from you guys. When What would be a situation to use this? And if you uh, think of something, I'll make another YouTube video and we can uh, explore Dated If a little bit more. Well, thank you again, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.